हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट एनवायरमेंटल ऑडिटिंग बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द एनवायरमेंटल ऑडिटिंग लेट वी लुक इन टू द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन ए बिजनेस एक्टिविटी और ए इंडस्ट्री एंड द एनवायरमेंट इन विच इट इज वर्किंग द इफेक्ट ऑफ दिस बिजनेस एक्टिविटी सपोज यू टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ए पेट्रोकेमिकल इंडस्ट्री मे बी डायरेक्ट एज वेल एज इन डायरेक्ट इफेक्ट ऑन द एनवायरमेंट the direct effects of this business activity or petrochemical industry that we have taken as a example uh, may be air pollution in the nearby areas this may be the water pollution of a water body which is in the nearby area this may be noise pollution in the nearby area this may be soil pollution in the nearby area that this uh, soil pollution later on may be having the effect due to release of these chemicals on the flora and fauna of that area there may be release of hazardous waste and they may also be having their impacts in addition to that there may be indirect effects of this industrial activity on the environment these indirect effects may be suppose uh, there is climate change and for that climate change there may be more energy consumption in the industry so that is a kind of effect of uh, indirect effect of that industry similarly to deal with the environment different governments have passed different laws different regulations and has set different standards and to meet these laws regulations and these standards industry have to do extra expenditure on their business activity in addition to that environment may also have effect on the industries i would like to suggest to my student before going for the environmental uh, environmental auditing let they study about the effects of business activities on the environment and the effects of environment on the business activities in recent years public awareness has increased regarding the environment conservation due to a number of accidents which have happened in the last 3 4 decades a few to mention are bhopal gas accident then uh, chernobyl accident the i am taking just these two example there may be many more i will request my students to make a listing of different kind of industrial accidents or disasters which have happened in the past and those have impacted the environment and in turn environment this environmental change due to these ac uh, these accidents have impacted the life of human beings uh, so in addition to that i will request my students to study about different kind of pollutions water pollution air pollution soil pollution noise pollution as well as hazardous waste pollution caused by these industries so the content of today's module are uh, in this module we will be discussing about origin of environmental auditing scope of environmental auditing objectives of environmental auditing uh, methodology used for environmental auditing different approaches used for environmental auditing yes uh, we will also be discussing the differences in environmental impact assessment and environmental auditing similarly we will also be discussing the differences between environmental review and environmental audit and uh, in addition to this we will discuss what are the benefits of environmental auditing and what is the status of environmental auditing in india environmental auditing is an environmental management tool which measures the impacts of industrial activities on the environment against set standards and criteria according to international chamber of commerce environmental audit is a way of management consisting of a systematic documented periodical and objective evaluation of performance of the management system and the proceedings drafted for environmental protection aiming at facilitating the control of practices and a possible impact on the environment and evaluating the respect of environmental policies including the achievements of environmental aims similarly confederation of uh, british industry in 1999 has given the definition of environmental audit according to confederation of british industry environmental audit is the systematic evaluation of interactions between any economic and environmental operation 
This includes all emissions to air, water, land, effect on ecosystem and biodiversity, legal constraints, public participation, etc. Basically, environmental auditing is a system of integrating the interest of industry and the environment. It includes the examination of the effects of air emission, water and soil pollution on the neighboring areas, landscapes, flora, fauna, etc. In nutshell, we can say environmental auditing is to investigate, understand and identify. It helps to improve environment by the regulation or reduction of existing industrial and human activities which harm the environment. An environmental audit report comprises the effects of organization or industries on environment in a systematic and documented manner. The environmental audit does not analyze all legal provisions performing a strategic approach of the entities activity or of the industry's activities. Yes, in this figure, we have tried to correlate the industrial activity and its impact on environment. So first you will find that there is an industrial activity that is going on. Certainly there will be certain releases from that industry and those releases will be having some impact on the environment. In the environmental auditing, in the third step, you will assess the impacts of this environmental activity on the environment. And in the fourth step, there is, we say appropriate activity means how these uh, releases can be controlled or what else can be done. Uh, now we come to the origin of environmental auditing that how this environmental auditing has emerged. This environmental auditing originated in United States in 1970s, basically due to the pollution caused by the oil and chemical industries. In 1979, United States Environment Protection Agency, also called, called as US EPA, first time issued a draft report and called to independent certified third party auditors to visit plants, collect samples for form analysis and submit report to governmental authorities. Uh, similarly, in Europe, environmental auditing started due to the reflection of environmental hazards at large scale by chemical and petrochemical industries. The concept of environmental auditing has been widely accepted by the industry since 1980s as a common management tool in developed countries and this is increasingly being applied in developing countries also. Environmental auditing was a result of commitment of implementation of Agenda 21. You all might be knowing that Agenda 21 was one of the document that was discussed during the Earth Summit 1992. There are several factors which are responsible for the increased awareness about environmental audit and these factors are basically the industrial calamities which have taken place, uh, several major industrial accidents such as Bhopal gas tragedy, Chernobyl, etc. have got significant attention which created need for environmental auditing under set corporate policies and standards. Environmental audit reduces the risk of accidental environmental damages and protect environmental health and safety. As discussed earlier also, public awareness is the another factor. You all might be knowing in 1960s a book named as The Silent Spring was published. And in that book, the effects of pesticides on the birds were highlighted for the first time. And since then, environmental awareness has increased a lot among public. Uh, so, because of this, there is a pressure on the corporates, there is a pressure on different companies or industries to make the kind of impacts they have, uh, to make it public that what impact they are having on the environment and how sensibly or how uh, scientifically they are doing to control that pollution.
If we come to the scope of environmental audit, the prime aim of environmental audit is to analyze the performance of existing management system. Depending upon the scope, audits can address one issue or whole range of issues. The audit team, size, time period and depth of investigation depend upon the scope of the audit. Suppose if this is a small audit, the audit team will be smaller in size. If this is a large scale audit, then the audit team will be having the experts from different arena and the size will be very big of this team. The environmental auditing is applied not only to environmental health and safety management in companies operation, but also to product safety, quality management and to areas such as loss prevention. Yes, if we come to the objectives of environmental auditing, the objectives of environmental auditing include to determine the mass balance. Mass balance is very, very important. Here I would suggest my students to learn something about mass balance. In a line, I would say mass balance is nothing but we take what inputs are coming to the industries and what we are getting the output in the form of product. So, some of the materials may be going in the form of waste. So, I will suggest my students to find out that what is mass balance uh, and how it is calculated. Uh, so, the objective of environmental auditing is to determine the mass balance of various materials used and performance of various processes. This is also very important because of a number, uh, a number of industries using old processes, lesser efficient processes and as a result of that, some, uh, uh, all the raw material is not converted into product and a significant amount of the reactant go as waste. Uh, to review the conversion and accordingly fix up norms for equipments and operations, performance and minimization of the waste. Uh, to identify the areas of water usage and wastewater generation and determine the characters of wastewater. To determine the air emissions, their sources, quantities and characteristics. To determine the solid and hazardous waste generated by the industries, their sources, quantities and characteristics. The possibilities of waste minimization, recovery and recycling of waste. This step is very, very important. Uh, to determine the performance of the existing waste treatment and control systems so as to modify or install additional or alternative control equipment accordingly. To determine the impact on surrounding environment, the surrounding environment include groundwater, streams, residential areas, agriculture areas, sensitive zones, etc. Due to the disposal of wastewater, air emissions and solid waste from the industry and accordingly identify suitable preventable measures if necessary. To verify compliance with the standards and conditions prescribed by different acts, notifications, amendments, regulations, etc. and check the effectiveness of organizational setup of the industry for decision making and environmental management with special reference to their technical viewpoint, attitudinal viewpoint and training and environmental policy of the company. Yes, if I come to the methodology of environmental auditing, in this slide we have tried to give a brief in nutshell that how the environmental audit is performed. So the very first step, step of environmental auditing is selection of the audit team. Now what will be the size of audit team? that will depend upon the scope of your environmental auditing. Once audited team is identified, then we will study the unit processes which are taking place in the industry. Then we will develop the flow diagram of different processes. Then we will join all unit process operations which are taking place in the industry. Then we will determine all inputs uh, such as water, chemicals, solids, fuels, etc. Then we will determine all outputs. This in outputs include all products which are produced by the industry, all byproducts, all waste products, 
the waste product whether liquid whether gaseous whether solid whether hazardous all kind of outputs are calculated then we drive the material balance or we can say then we drive the mass balance from here we will find out the efficiency of the industry that how much raw material is converted into product and how much raw material is going as waste then uh, based upon this mass balance we will identify the waste reduction methods and then we will evaluate environmental and economical implications of waste uh, reduction and finally we will go to the action. So this is the total plan of environmental auditing for a industry. Yes, now, there are different approaches which are used for environmental auditing. Uh, environmental auditing is consists of mainly three phases. These three phases include pre-audit activities, on-site activities and post-audit activities. In the pre-audit activities, uh, these, the, these pre-audit activities are full of management promises, set overall goals, objectives, scope and priorities and select team to ensure objectivity and professional competence. An environmental audit should be initiated by the management and provide all the resource necessary for the program. The management must have explicit commitment to follow up audit findings and correct the irregularities that the audit will uncover in the industry. Once the objectives of the audit is finalized, preliminary information about the industry should be obtained through a questionnaire and the data obtained helps in identifying the areas of concern and thus in the selection of members of the audit team. The team members might include corporate staff, operating staff and even experts from the outside and should have knowledge, of, knowledge in environmental regulations in plant operations and processes, pollution control technologies but should essentially be independent. Once the audit team is constituted, the objective of the audit should be formalized and specific tasks should be assigned to each member. The information obtained through a questionnaire about the industry include location of plant and the surrounding land uses, climate conditions, product or products manufactured, raw materials, details about the manufacturing process details about the water utilization, wastewater generation and disposal, gaseous or air emissions, waste generation, hazardous waste emission, organizational setup of the company, policies of the company with respect to environmental management. Now, the next step is on-site activities. These activities include well-defined protocols or checklist, review of documents, and previous records maintained at the plant, review of policies and plans, interviews of the operating staff, site inspection, identifying waste generation and waste flow line and evaluating performance of the pollution control equipments, etc. in the plant. Once the audit team is familiar with the manufacturing process, layout of the plant and process operations and possible impact on the environment the team should work out the material balance in each unit operation. The sources and quantities of generation of water, waste water, gaseous emissions, solid waste and parameters to be analyzed for pollution control should be identified from the material balance. Locations of possible leakages, spills and overflows should be identified. Samples should be collected by the audit team itself for assessing the level of pollution and subsequently a draft report should be prepared. Things included in draft report prepared by the audit team are material balance in each unit operation, identification of lo location generating the waste, analysis of various samples, field observations, findings and 
final recommendations for the industry. Now, the third step is post audit activities. Post audit activities include evaluation of findings, reporting with recommendations, preparation of an action plan and a follow up. The mass balance of the materials in each process should be compared with the stoichiometric requirement and the excess uses of the material are to be brought to the notice of the management and a norms should be fixed for performance in each unit. Data in regard to performance of pollution control equipments should be analyzed and reasons for any failure should be identified. Suggestion in regard to the segregation, neutralization, equalization, detoxif detoxification, etc. should also be given to achieve the desired pollution control in the concerned industry. Ultimately, a formal final report containing all the necessary documents along with any recommendations that may include measures for best practicable environmental management, annualized capital cost of the pollution control measures and their operating cost and action plans with the time frame and priority should be prepared. An action plan should be developed by the management after the submission of the final audit report which should ensure implementation of recommendation of the environmental audit. Yes, there are a number of environmental management strategies strategies which are adopted at national and international level. Uh, I would like to talk about two, three strategies which are adopted at national and international level. So one of them is environmental impact assessment, another one is environmental auditing. So there is a basic difference in environmental impact assessment and environmental auditing. So here we will discuss what are the differences in environmental assessment and environmental auditing. Environmental assessment is an anticipatory tool and action taken place before starting of a project. Suppose we want to establish a nuclear power plant in an area. So what will be the impact of that nuclear power plant on the environment in future that all is studied environmental impact assessment. So this environmental impact assessment attempts to predict the impact of project on the environment for future action to sustainable development. Whereas in case of environmental auditing, we studied the environmental impact where the process or the industry or the activity is already in operation. This is used to take the, check the current existing practices and assessing the current environmental effects. Environmental auditing provides a snapshot of looking at what is happening at that point in time in an organization. Environmental auditing covers a variety of management practices which are used to evaluate an environmental performance of company. Environmental auditing refers to strict checking systems and procedures against set standards or regulations whenever used to cover the gatherings and evaluation of any data with environmental relevance termed as environmental review. So now we will discuss what are the differences in environmental review and environmental audit. The objective of environmental review is to determine which performance standard should be met. For example, a company wa wants to reduce the emission of total organic compounds from 110 100 tons per year to 10 tons per year. Whereas in case of environmental audit, the objective is to see whether we have really achieved the desired standard of emission that we have fixed at 10 tons per year. The environmental issues in environmental review are that all known environmental issues with or without explicit standard to measure the performance are considered. Whereas in case of environmental audit, only those environmental issues are 
consider for which standards exist. For example, regulatory requirements, internal company standards or good management practices. Now the question arises: how often these are required? In case of environmental audit, before developing environmental management systems or before or after any significant change in operation or practices, whereas in case of environmental audit, regularly and on a pre-planned cycle basis these are required. If we come to the geographical boundaries, in case of environmental review, whichever the business could have an environmental impact in the life of the product that is raw material selection, transportation, manufacturing, product use and disposal. Whereas the geographical boundary of environmental audit is usually well defined that is limited to site, distribution companies or local planning authorities. Similarly, this term audit was given by the chartered accountants for the financial health of the industries. So there is a basic difference in the financial audit as well as in the environmental audit. As far as financial audit is concerned, financial audit is part of regulatory or legal process that is organization have to perform it. Whereas in case of environmental audit, this is with few, ex few exceptions, environmental audits are voluntary affairs, even the proprietary environmental review which is mandatory under ISO 14001 is voluntary as the standard is voluntary. Financial audit is a annual affair, whereas in case of environmental audit, it is not necessary that it will be annual, it can be performed as and when desired by the industry. The financial audits are usually done by external staff which are certified for the financial audit. Whereas in case of environmental audit, environmental audits are performed by external and or internal staff, professional indemnity considerations. There is no legal requirement of auditors to be competent or trained, although professional bodies in many countries try to stop this. As far as the methodology is concerned, in case of financial audit, Financial audits are based on comparative standards which are publicly available, journal principles of accounting, etc. Uh, whereas in case of environmental audit, it varies very much between auditors and companies. The result of financial audit are public document in the form of annual reports, whereas the results of Environmental audit are public document and these are in the form of, these are also in the form of annual reports. As far as the liability is concerned, in case of financial audit, auditors are partially liable for their reports. They have to provide a true and fair view of the organization. Whereas in case of environmental auditing, except few exceptions, there are negotiations between auditors and auditee and there is no external liability implication in environmental audits. Now, if we come to the benefits of environmental auditing, environmental auditing is having a number of benefits. The benefits of environmental auditing include to safeguard the environment and natural resources used in the plant or the project or in the business activity or in the uh, this industrial activity. Uh, to verify compliance with the domestic and international environmental laws, addresses current potential future problems that may arise during the course of action, assess training programs and provide data to assess in training to poor people's skill development initiatives, enable companies to build on good environmental performances, give due credit where appropriate and highlight deficiencies, identify potential cost savings from waste minimization and other activities, facilitate exchange 
and comparison of information between different plants or subsidiary companies of the parent company, demonstrate company's commitment to environmental protection to employees, the public and the authorities. Yes, now we will be discussing the environmental program in India. India was the first country to implement environmental, audit as, environmental auditing as a mandatory process. This process was made reality by Gazette notification issued on 13th March 1992 by Government of India, which made the submission of environmental audit reports mandatory. In India, submission of an environmental mental statement by 30th September for the previous financial year by pollution units seeking consent under Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 and or the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1991, 1981 and or the authorization under the Hazardous Waste Management and Handling Rules 1989 to the concerned state pollution control boards has been made mandatory. If the pollution unit fails to comply with the rules, it may invite punishment with imprisonment for a term which may extend to five years or with fine which may extend to one lakh of rupees or both. Yes, now I would like to discuss with you the notification issued by the government and what kind of information is to be provided in this uh, environmental audit report by different industries in India. In exercise of power conferred by section 6 and 25 of Environment Protection Act 1986, the central government made the following rule further to amend the environment protection rules 1986. The rules which were issued for making environmental auditing mandatory in India are called the Environment Protection Third Amendment Rules 2005. The rule, they, these rules shall come into force on the date of their publication in the official gadget or otherwise as mentioned. In the Environmental Protection Rule 1986, after Rule 13, the following rule shall be inserted, namely, Submission of Environmental Audit Report. Every person carrying on an industry, operation or process requiring consent under Section 25 of the Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 or under Section 21 of the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981 or both or authorization under the Hazardous Waste Management and Handling Rules 1989 issued under the Environment Protection Act 1986 shall submit an environmental audit report for the financial year ending the 31st March in Forum 5 to the concerned State Pollution Control Board on or before the 30, 30th day of September every year beginning 1993. Uh, the second amendment was in appendix A after form 5 the form after form 4 the form 5 shall be inserted. Now let me discuss form 5. This form is very very important to understand the environmental auditing in India. Form 5 is having eight parts and these parts are named as part A, part B, part C, part D, part E, part F, part G and part H. In different parts, different information will be required. Let me discuss different parts one by one. Let me come to the part A. In part A, we have to give the general information about the industry. This information includes name and address of the owner, occupier of the industry and uh, operation or process, industry category whether it is a prime industry or whether it is a secondary industry, production capacity of that particular plant or industry, year of establishment of that plant, data 
date of last environmental statement submitted by the industry. This information can be obtained from the records of the industry. Let me come to the part B. In part B, we have to give information about water and raw material consumption by the industry. As far as the water, water consumption is concerned, that is to be given in the cubic meters per day. The water requirement of the industry in the process, in cooling and in domestic sector, that all has to be provided. In the form 5, a table is given and in table that information has to be provided. In the table, the information has to be given about water consumption in the previous year as well as in the present year. Yes, the second part of the part B is regarding the raw material consumption. Similar to the water consumption, we have to provide the information about different raw materials used in the industry. We have to provide information the raw materials used in the previous year and the raw material which, are, which we have used in the current year for which the statement is submitted. We will provide the information regarding the pollution generated by the industry. Again in the form 5, a table is given and in the table we have to give the name of the pollutant uh, related to water, related to air, how much quantity of these uh, pollutants has been generated, that all has to be given. And in this form, in this uh, part C, we also have to give that there is how much deviation from the standards. In the part D, yes, in the part D, we have to give the information about different hazardous waste generated at the industry. Again, we have to give information that how much hazardous waste have generated from the process and how much hazardous waste has generated from the pollution control facilities. This information we have to give in the kilograms of hazardous waste generated. This information will be given for the previous year as well as for the year for which we are submitting the report in the table. In the part E, the information is to be provided about the solid waste generated at the industry. Again, for the solid waste, a table is provided. The, about solid waste, we have to provide information that how much solid waste have generated from the process and how much solid waste have generated from the pollution control facilities at the industry and what quantity of the solid waste has been reutilized or recycled by the industry. This information has to be given by the previous, this information is to be given for the previous year as well as for the current financial year. In part F, we have to specify the characteristics in terms of concentration and quantum of hazardous as well as solid waste and indicate disposal practices adopted for both these categories of waste. In part G, we will provide information about the impact of pollution control measures on conservation of natural resources and consequently on the cost of production. And in part H, we have to provide the additional investment proposal for environmental production including abatement of pollution. Now, if I come to summing up this module, in this module we have learned that why there is a requirement of environmental auditing. We have learned that what is the methodology which we have to adopt. We have also learned that what are the differences in environmental impact assessment and what are the differences uh, what are the differences in environmental impact assessment and environmental auditing along with this we have also learned that what are the differences in environmental review and uh, environmental auditing and also we have learned that what are the differences in financial auditing and environmental auditing along with this we have discussed the form 5 that is to be provided by every industry for the environmental auditing in India. Along with this, I will request my student to visit the sites of different state pollution control boards, of central pollution control board, as well as of the Ministry of Environment and Forest to have more information about environmental auditing. In end, I would like to give 
one assignment to my student, let they have a print of form 5 and tries to find out the annual reports of different industry or find out some information from different industry and let they try to fill it information in this performer 5 along with this I will I would like to give one more assignment to my student to write the five reasons that why an industry should opt for environmental auditing and what are the benefits of environmental auditing for the industry for the society at large thank you